Today we're going to look at installing the Voltar RGB and S-Video board into an SNES Mini. This thing only comes equipped with composite output, which is a little silly because Nintendo still put an sRGB chip into it. So you can actually, even without this board, get RGB out of this thing, but it requires a little bit more finesse since you're soldering directly to the sRGB chip. And uh, it requires you to have a couple resistors on hand. I did not, so since I was gonna have to order stuff anyway, figured might as well just get the, uh, get the board, do it all at once, and it's a little bit easier to get done. So once you are done, you will be able to get RGB. If you want it, you can also wire it up for S-Video, and it's pretty easy to install. So let's take a look. Okay, so obviously the first step here is going to be open this up. So we're gonna flip it over. Gonna take our game bit, and we're just gonna go at it. And then you just pop the top off. So with the top off, there are seven screws that we need to take out. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this one that's hiding back here. So that's seven. Uh, these three that go into the plastic things are all just regular steel screws. These four are like brass screws, so they're pretty easy to tell apart. Once we have all the screws out, this should just lift out. And what we are looking for is this section right here. So right there, that's where the multi-out connector connects. We're gonna be taking our little RGB attachment and basically just laying it right on top of there. Before we can stick that thing on, we gotta clip these leads coming off of these capacitors. They stick out a little bit too far. So wanna take your flush cutters if you've got them and just So this should more or less just sit right on top of there at this point. Um, the only potential other thing to think about is that these two uh, right in the middle there, if you could see that, they are soldered together. So that is a little bit of a problem in terms of getting this thing on. Uh, the best way to probably deal with that is gonna be to heat it up. Take your solder pump and uh, suck that up. So we're gonna do that real quick. All right, so if you can see this, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, they don't even really have to be separated because they're just, they're supposed to be wired together. So the important thing really is just that you can fit this guy over them. So if you can do, if you can come in here put this dude over it and solder it in, you're good to go. Um, I also put a little bit of electrical tape on the back. I don't think it's strictly necessary, but there are a couple little vias, a little holes on here that technically have some metal plating wanted to make sure. So we're gonna go back down here now, put this, put that guy in place, start soldering. Okay, so now you can see here we have done all of these solder pads. There are a total of 12 of them. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is come in and fill in all of these. So we're just gonna wanna basically have little blobs of solder on each of those so that it's easy to get the wires on there. Okay, so now you can see we just have little blobs of solder on each of those pads that will prep us for the next step after we put our wires here, we bring them over there. So this is a little hard to show on camera, but right down here is what we're looking for. So it looks like it goes, so they're right by this thing that says C1. So not this one, but the next one, it goes blue, green, red, skip one there, and then that's our C-Sync right there. So we need to get uh, wires in there. So I have done this. I'm gonna have to uh, strip and tin the ends of these. It's essentially going to be for me 
would you freaking focus? Blue, green, red, and then yellow is our C-Sync. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and then we can stick that in there. I'm taking this off. Uh, there are two screws here, and then one back in here on this regulator. I'm taking this off just to get it out of my way for right now. I'm also gonna take this off. And the reason for that is that our wires here are gonna poke through the vias onto this side, and I think it's gonna be easier to solder them here rather than trying to solder them on the back side. So we'll do that. All right, so my wires are tinned. They need to go in our little holes here. So it goes blue, then green, then red, then C-Sync. I am probably gonna do these one at a time just to make sure I'm getting them in there right. Uh, so just as an aside, these are very small holes. These wires just barely fit. So you need a fairly thin gauge of wire. Um, so now you'll see, come around this side, it pokes through the hole there. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. That just means that it will now be a little bit easier for me to solder that. If you can see that at all, then your eyesight is probably better than mine. But uh, right there, it pokes through. So we'll take our solder iron and we'll solder right there. I'm also gonna take these, trim off any extras on top, top here. And some of the wire became a little exposed on the bottom, so I'm just gonna go back in on this side, tidy it up. All right, so you can see here now, we've got blue, green, red, yellow. Uh, I know that's technically an orange wire, it's fine. It just helps me figure it out. I have a little bit of shrink tube on here that's gonna help us in terms of Kind of routing this over like this uh, is what we're gonna do, and then we're just gonna run it up there. I think I might have actually put a little too much shrink tube on there. Whoops. Sorry, we can probably trim that down a little bit. Um, so the next step is just gonna be to connect these here. They're gonna connect to these last four. Um, if I'm looking at the thing here, that's gonna be red, green, blue, C-Sync. Should look something like this. We've got it connected here. We've got it connected there. Red, green, blue, C-Sync. And uh, if this is all you want, if RGB was your end goal here, you are done. There is nothing else that you need to do to make this work. However, if you want S-Video, which is handy for uh, a lot of consumer CRT televisions, and there's two more wires that we need to do. They come here, Luma and Chroma. And then on the other side, they have to connect to the built-in sRGB chip. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky and it's handy to have a very small tip on your soldering iron, which I do not, but we should still be able to make this work. So one last thing before we move on to the S-Video installation is this jumper right here. Um, if you are only doing RGB, this might still be important for you. So if you jumper this, if you solder these pads together, this will give you TTL C-Sync output. That's going to depend on your configuration, but uh, let's just go ahead and do that now. So if you want TTL, that's all there is to it. Just blob some solder on there to jumper those two pads, and then you're done. So now we can move on to the S-Video is going to require a little bit more uh, finesse. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit tricky. So you'll note I'm holding this upside down. Note the direction of the text here. You'll also see that there's this number 13 there. So the fifth one in from the right here, uh, that is our Luma connection for S-Video. And then the very last one on the bottom right here, that is our Chroma connection. So we need to solder some wires to those pins, uh, and you're gonna be soldering that directly to the pins. So like I said, it is helpful to have a small uh, tip on your soldering iron. If you don't, just be careful. Um, you know, there's only so much that you can do with the big tip. You're not gonna be able to get in here with the very big one, but if you've got one that's kinda, this is the size I'm working with here. But as you can see, compared to these pins, it's uh, it's still pretty large. So it's gonna be a bit of a trick. 
but we should be able to make it work. So I'm gonna go in on that. I'll show you the results once we're done. After that's done, we're basically gonna be wire running the wires down through one of these holes here, flipping the board over and wiring it to here. So that part is a little nerve wracking and there isn't really any good way to get it on camera. But as you can see, I now have these two wires soldered directly to the pins. Uh, we've got Luma, we've got Chroma, and then I'm running them down through this little hole here to get to the other side. At this point, I am going to bolt, uh, I'm gonna screw this uh, heat shield back on here. Uh, there should be enough room underneath it so that it does not pinch these wires on the way down. Um, so we're gonna do that just to help keep these wires in place and then we'll flip it back over and do the backside. All right, so we've got the heat shield back on. Our wires are around this side. I'm gonna take this opportunity to use up some of the rest of my heat shrink tubing because this is kind of a long way to run. You could, I suppose, have run them the other way. I think this looks a little tidier, so. And on this board, on the left is our Luma and then our Chroma. Uh, it's not labeled on this particular board, which is a little bit annoying, but uh, I have it set so that gray is Luma for brightness. Uh, the purple here is Chroma for the color. So we're going to attach those two real quick, and then we are done. Okay, so if you look here, we've got Luma, Chroma, red, green, blue, and C-Sync. We've also set it up for TTL so it matches, in my case, the rest of my Nintendo consoles. We just need to reassemble this, make sure that these wires don't get pinched on the bottom. But I think we should be fine. There's, uh, there's plenty of room down there. So we'll just reassemble it. Uh, the last thing really is just to test it out. Uh, you'll want to test out this video and the RGB, make sure that everything's working. Uh, you can do that before you put everything back together if you want. Um, it's probably a good idea because that way if you messed anything up you can just go back and fix it. But I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this and we'll wrap it up. Alright so that is really all there is to it. it. Looks exactly the same on the outside but now we get S video and we get RGB in addition to the composite. So thanks for watching hope this helps.